It's California Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. And I'm in Sacramento, California, and I am joined by Ian Calderon. He is a member of the California State Assembly. He is also the chair of the Arts and Entertainment and Other Names Committee. And I want to speak with you about arts and entertainment. We are from Southern California. We know the importance of Hollywood to the Southern California economy. The challenge is that other states also know the importance of the Hollywood economy, and they are doing a very good job luring Hollywood away from Hollywood. Right. I mean, this is an issue that's been ongoing. Uh, you know, I think we did a great step by creating this tax incentive program. And, it, it, and you know, it, this program has really kind of blossomed into something that is really should be a model for every state to follow. But the challenge, sir, is that our program is but a shell of New York's, for example. Mm -hmm. Their tax incentive program is four times larger than ours. And so... We're really getting schooled, if I can say. I mean, New York is taking our drama pilots, they're taking our films, and it's not just the actors that are suffering. It's the grips, it's the dry cleaners, it's the local restaurants. This really has an impact on Southern California and the whole state. Well, I'd ask you to, to think about it like this. Yes. They have to have more of a tax incentive program, a larger tax incentive program, to try and lure the business there. Okay. They need more money than we do. Theirs is about 450, 420, or something right. like that. A, a year for five years. Ours is 100 million uh, for two years. Right. Right now, we have a measure moving through the the legislature. That's I can't remember the name. It's, it's okay. 18 something. Um, that's authored, authored by Assemblymember Gatto and Boca Negra. That calls for a five year term of the program at undefined amount. But my suggestion would be put it at 500 million dollars. And let's get it through the legislature with all the bells and whistles, post-production, and so right. on and so forth, everything that we need, and ask the governor to decide and make the decision what oh. he thinks is, is worth it. But, but come to the governor with the United Front saying, we want this industry to stay here because we really are at a pivotal point. If we don't do something now, the industry is going to be gone. And once it leaves, it's not going to come back because they've already made the investments other places. It's still technically here. All their investment is still here, and they want to be able to keep it. It's less for them to stay here and film, so we don't need to necessarily have as robust of a, of a program as, say, in New York, but we need to have something that's substantial and competitive, and that's what this is really about. It's about staying competitive. But the challenge becomes, how do you convince an assembly member from North State who sees an incentive program as corporate welfare? They don't necessarily realize that the dry cleaner benefits as well. Well, okay, so um, to account for that issue, what is in the bill is an extra added incentive to film anywhere outside of uh -huh. L.A. County. Uh -huh. And, you know, there are just as many films that are filmed in Northern California as there are in Southern California. That is just a misnomer. But people like to talk about, well, what about education or these other social pro programs that we care about? You're just giving money to an industry that doesn't, that doesn't need it. Well, first, how do you think we're going to we pay for education all these public programs? We generate revenue. Th this is an industry that generates billions and billions of dollars a year that we then can put into education. What I found very interesting is that the chief legislative analyst recently issued a report indicating that tax incentives may not be the best approach. It could be an arms race to the bottom. What well, do you think about that? I mean, everybody has their opinion. Right. And, and you know, it, it's great to say this is what I think. Okay, well, what's your solution then? Because we're all ears. If you can come up with something better, then we'll take a look into it. But as of right now, this is what's determined to be the best solution. And, you know, and, and most people don't really understand why tax incentive programs are necessary. Well, you know, the industry looks for them because of piracy. So you have piracy that you lose, that, that happens and occurs every year. You lose money because of piracy on your, on your projects, and a tax incentive program is something that you can use to help offset that. And so that's why these studios really actively go after these tax incentive programs. And when a state does a tax incentive program, we're not doing it because we want to give money to, to, to these studios. We're doing it because we want to create those jobs and have funding for those Let's jobs. Let's continue the conversation. For our viewers on HLN, thanks for joining us. For our other viewers, we'll be right back. So, sir, I want to speak with you about one of your bills. It's okay. known as AB 1662, and it deals with the Arts Council. Yeah. I recently had the honor of interviewing the director of the Arts Council, Craig Watson, and I was quite surprised to learn that the Arts Council is one that is not as well-funded as other Arts Councils throughout the country, for example. Like, was it $5 million? It's a shell of, of what other states see. Well, okay, so... You know, it's an interesting issue because there used to be a federal match. Apparently, I just learned that this was cut. Ah, oh, okay. So we do the bare minimum to be able to receive that federal match. 
that bare minimum is a million dollars in funding uh, a year uh, from the mm -hmm. state, from the general fund, and then the, the federal government would do then a match for a million, and and then the speaker was able through the assembly to authorize like kind of like a gift, if you will, but of, of an extra added two million dollars of funding, mm -hmm. which brought it up to five. So what I'm working on right now is is you have other measures that move through the legislature that are talk, trying to focus on a specific number. Twenty-five million is the, the number that they want. That's what arts you know, had everything kept up. Arts funding should be about twenty-five million dollars. There is no more federal match, mind you, that, that there used away. to be. That is that is gone now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm ju I've just learned that. But we also have to be realistic. We're coming back from a recession. We want to put money in a rainy day fund. There's a lot of people with their hands out asking for money, and, and, and they're not necessarily um, you know, in the wrong for asking for more money because everybody got caught. Got, got cut. And caught. <laughs> well, well, caught, <laughs> caught and caught. Yeah. So, so what we're doing is we said, okay, we want funding to increase. But we left the amount blank that we're negotiating right now with the governor's office, the budget, or everybody else. Because no matter what, what we, what we want to do is start a precedence of increasing funding for arts right. education. So we left the number blank. We're going to you know, uh, negotiate with the governor, negotiate with the Appropriations Committee, come up with a number, and then that's what we're going to go with. Even if it's, you know, whatever, whatever it will be, no matter what, it'll be an increase from where we are now, and that's what's important. I want to talk about another bill of yours. It's AB 2271, and it focuses on the long-term unemployed. When I saw this title, sir, I didn't expect what I was going to read. Because what I presumed you were focused upon is the fact that the federal government is not providing benefits to the long-term unemployed. That's what we hear on the nightly news. This is completely different than that. And I didn't know any of this, and I want to hear about it and what you want to do about it. Right. So it has to do with, when, you, when I say I go in for a job, right. I, I, I have been, I've been without a job for quite a while, right. six months or longer. I go in, well, sometimes it's a requirement to ask you to, 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 to divulge. Specific, well, divulge how long you have been unemployed. And we are, we've seen numbers and statistics showing that those that are unemployed for six months or longer are actually you know, not getting the jobs and not getting called back, even if they are as qualified as somebody who's been unemployed for maybe two months or two weeks. And so what this bill does is say, during the application process, you cannot ask somebody how long they have been unemployed. You just have to look at them based on their skills and their qualifications and whether they're qualified. You can learn afterwards, but you can't make it a requirement to accept somebody's application. Interesting. And the chamber is not opposed. I was, you, how did you know that was my next question? That was my next question. What does the chamber say? Well, we went to the chamber and we said, look, this is a problem. You know, how are we going to be able to bring ourselves, continue to bring ourselves up out of the, the, you know, the economic downturn if we can't get people who have been unemployed longer, six months and longer, a job? And, you know, they agreed with what it was that we were saying and they didn't oppose the measure because they understand the importance of people having work and a steady paycheck. In the final analysis, though, the employer or potential employer will find out about their long-term unemployment. So is this really going to be effective or beneficial? Yeah, because the, I mean, because what you're doing is where they weren't able to even get their foot in the door. Now they can get their foot in the door because you you know you're basing them you know, their their ability to be able to do a good job off of their qualifications and right. what their previous work history is. So how's the bill doing? What do your friends on the Republican side say? Even though the chamber is unopposed or not opposed. You know, you know we have a good working uh, rapport, uh, both both parties here. Right. Most people don't know. We agree 80% of the time. I, with one I another. did know that. Yes. Um, no, none of them have come up to me to explain or to, to express any major opposition or any opposition at all to the bill. I, I'm, I'm hoping that they don't. But again, it's an ongoing com conversation. The bill is currently on suspense in appropriations. But again... Why? W what's the fiscal impact? Well, they're saying it's going to cost between one to three million dollars just because they, of complaints. They're saying there's going to be added complaints because okay. of the system. I disagree. I'm curious as to where those numbers came from. So I'm going to talk to the committee and we're going to go ho try and nail down a, a, a certain number. But again, this is for people uh, that, that need it. And this is for, to help promote job um, growth in, in the state, which is really important. Okay. And we're following the lead of the federal government, too. Uh, is that true? We are. His name is Ian Calderon. He is a member of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Palmer, and this is California Edition.